Greetings, friend. I will explain to you the difference between continuous and discontinuous loops. Not only that, I'm going to show you all the different types of discontinuous loops because there's three of them. The last example I show you is the most important, so you need to watch the whole thing. Click below if you want to give these puzzles a go. And with that, it's solving time. So this puzzle, my first example, is Hurricane by Clover. And in this one, I want to show you what a continuous loop is. So the definition of continuous loop is an alternate inference chain, or an AIC, that has an even number of links, and it snakes its way around the puzzle back to where it starts in a perfect fashion. Basically, it's like an alternate inference chain that comes back onto itself. You can enter the continuous loop in any cell and get back to where that cell was. Uh, so there, it's not a really necessarily a start and end. It's a continuous loop. Okay, and then once you do this, the genius thing about a continuous loop is that it converts all the weak links into strong links. So if you're not familiar with strong and weak links, you're going to need to watch my alternate inference chain video and also my XY chain video before this will make a lot of sense. This is meant to be something you watch after those two videos uh, because I've been featuring a lot of puzzles lately that have these continuous and discontinuous loops, and you asked me to come up with a tutorial to talk about this. So in this particular puzzle, let's look at these outside four cells. Okay, what you might notice is they're all by-value cells. And for a continuous loop, it doesn't have to all be by-value cells, but it happens to work really well in this particular puzzle. So you can start in any one of these cells. We'll start in the top right cell here. So this 8 has a strong link to this 3. And then it has a weak link to this 3. Uh, and we could, because what that means is if this 3 is true, then all these other 3s would be false. But there is more than you know this, these two 3s. There's a third 3 there. So you know it's a weak link. But any by-value cell has a strong link. So if, if well, this 3 was false, then that has to be a 5. If one's false, the other is true. That's what the weak, what a strong link means. Weak link means anything's true. Like if this was a 3, then nothing else in this row could be a 3. All right, so we'll start again here. Eight, uh, strong link to this three, weak to this three, strong to this five. Weak link to this five, strong link to this two, weak link to this two, strong link to this eight. And then you go back up, weak link to this eight, and then you go back from eight, strong link to the three. So it's important. It still has to keep alternating. So weak link here, strong link there. You go. So this, these four cells form a continuous loop because it's an alternating of strong weak links. And this is very powerful because what you can do now is any place where you have the two weak links, uh, you can eliminate all the other those cans between the two weak links. And the reason being is what we're saying is this is an eight. If it's not an eight, then it have to be a three. All right. And so the three would be here. If this is not a three, this would have to be a three. So the three has got to be in one of those two spots is how it works. Right. So if this was an eight, that you know, then this would be a two, this would be a five, and this would be a three. If this is a three, then that then that would not be a three. But you saw how the three has to be in one of those two cells. And it works the same here. The five's got to be in one of the purple cells. The two's got to be in one of these cells along row nine. And then up column nine, the eight's got to be in one of these two cells. So what you can do is you look across here and you can eliminate all the other threes along row one because the three has to be one of those two spots. And you see, we'll be able to solve this cell here for a six, which is nice. Same thing here, you can eliminate every five down column one. And then you look across row nine, you can eliminate every two in row nine. And then up here, you could eliminate every eight that's not in the purple cells. And you see how strong that is? With this one, you immediately start solving cells. And then you can move forward with the puzzle. This is a great puzzle. I love solving this by Clover. Uh, amazing setter. You want to check that out. But I wanted to give you the idea of continuous loops and how it's an alternate uh, back and forth before I get into the discontinuous loop. Because you got to understand this concept before we go to the next concept. So let's move on to that next example. So for our second example, we're going to start diving into the discontinuous loops. And this puzzle is Kimono by Shy. It's a classic puzzle. And it's a very hard puzzle. Um, the intended strategy is not uh, continuous or discontinuous loops. It actually uh, uses the, the firework. However, there is a way to solve in this 
puzzle, a way to make progress using a discontinuous loop. So first we need to define what is a discontinuous loop? How's it different from that continuous loop I just showed you? And the definition is basically a discontinuous loop is a loop that breaks the alternate inference chain pattern through one cell. And it can do that in three different ways. So I got to cover all three cases where a discontinuous loop works. A discontinuous loop is not as powerful as a continuous loop. Because you saw with that uh, example I just showed you with Clover, that you can make eliminations across all the rows and columns between the cells in that continuous loop. Well, a discontinuous loop, you're only going to be making a solve or an elimination in one cell because that's how it works. So it's not as powerful. However, it is something you're going to see quite a bit in the more advanced puzzles, and it'll help you break through in an otherwise uh, unsolvable looking situation. So let's start up here in the top right corner again. All right, so this A has a strong link with this 9. A weak link to this 9. And remember, it's a weak link, so it doesn't matter if we don't need to fill in these cells because uh, if this is a 9, that wouldn't be a 9. The weak link still applies. Then a strong link to this 9 because there's no other place for a 9 to be in column 1. And then a weak link from this 9 to this 5. And this is something you want to see here. If there's more than two candidates in a cell, then they are weakly linked to each other, right? Because if that's a 5, everything else is false. That's a 9, everything else is false. Um, same way, if you just have two candidates, a bye bye cell, they have a strong link to each other, but it also acts as a weak A strong link always, always acts as a weak link. Sometimes we call it a surrogate weak link um, because if one's true, the other's false. It'll still work. In this case, this is a weak link. And then this five, there's only one other five here in block seven, and it's right there. And you might be, if you looked at this puzzle, you might go, okay, well, there's a five coming down here, and there's a five cutting across here. Shouldn't there be a five in this spot? Well, uh, when I got to this point in this puzzle, what I noticed is there's actually an X-wing of fives. The fives are limited to the same two spots in rows six and nine. And because of that, you can eliminate the five right there. That's why there's no five there. And it created a strong link between these two fives. Hopefully that all makes sense. And then along row eight, you'll notice because there's a five here, none of these can be a five. The only other place you can have a five is in this cell right here along row eight. Um, and then we're going to want to keep an eye on this cell right here, and we will work our way back up. Okay, this is how it works. Uh, the first type is when you have two strong links in a row, and that's what we're gonna do. So say it's got a strong link to the nine, weak to this nine, strong to this nine, weak link to this five, strong link to this five, then another strong link to this five. Two strong links in a row. Weak link to this five, Strong to the seven because the bye bye cell, they can have a strong link there. Weak to this seven, strong to the six. Weak to this six, strong to this eight. Weak to this eight, and then go back to strong link to the nine. So it is a loop, but it's discontinuous because we did two strong links from this cell to this cell. And when you have two strong links in a row, that's a discontinuous loop. You can only do it in one of the parts of the chain. If it's too strong a low row, this is case one, you can actually solve this cell for a five. A five has to be in this cell right here. And I'll prove to you how that works. So first case, this is an eight. If this is an eight, then this would be a six. Then this would be a seven. This would be a five. That can't be a five. This would be a five. Make sense? This is not an eight, this is a nine. That can't be a nine. This would be a nine. So this can't be a five, your five would be right here. So the strong, both strong links tell you that no matter what this cell is, this has to be a five. And so that's how you can solve the discontinuous loop, uh, type one, we have two strong links in a row. So very important thing, one, you can only do it with one chain, and every other chain, every other part of the chain has to alternate between the strong and weak links. And two, uh, you got, Two strong in a row, you can solve it for that cell. And three, the other thing is that you have to complete this loop, right? You got to get all the way back to your starting point or it will not work for the eliminations. Stay tuned to the end because I'm going to give you a link to a puzzle that uses both continuous and discontinuous loops and it takes it in a whole different direction. So you're going to want to watch that. But now let's move on to our next example.
Okay, for our next example, this is the puzzle which I really love trying to pronounce. Quad licit jovi non licit bovi by Glum Hippo. So it's a bunch of Latin I just said, and it was a tribute to Jovial. Uh, but Glum Hippo made this particular puzzle. And there is a discontinuous loop here that I'm going to show you. And it's the type 2. The second case I want to talk to you about discontinuous. First one, we had two strong links in a row. Well, now I'm going to show you two weak links in a row involving the same candidate. That's our second case. So let's see how it works in this puzzle. And it might be kind of hard to figure out where these discontinuous loops are by looking in here. If you've seen some of my earlier puzzles, in fact, the one where this comes from, I use coloring on individual digits to help show me where the strong links were. And that is a technique. I can't do it in the CTC app, but you can still point these things out just by looking. So if we start in this cell right here, look across is how many nines are in row eight? Well, there's one here and one here. So they have a strong link with each other, right? And you'll notice it has a weak link with this eight, uh, the nines, yeah, weak link this eight. And then how many eights are in column five? There's only two. So that's a strong link to this eight, right? So strong from nine to nine, weak to the eight, strong to this eight. Now you wanna look how many threes are across row nine. There's two of them. So you go from this eight, weak link to this three, strong link to this three, okay? And you see how we're kind of alternating, right? Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. We're kind of using these cells that have multiple candidates in them as long as there's a strong link coming out of there. And so for this three, you got a weak link to this nine, and then look up, there's only one other nine in column seven. So it's got a strong link up to this nine. And then this is the cell we care about. I'm gonna highlight that special this time. Because from this nine, you have a weak link to this nine, and then another weak link to this nine, and then you go strong link back to the nine and you finish your loop. So let's see how that goes again. Strong, weak to the eight, strong to this eight, weak to the three, strong to this three, weak to the nine, strong to this nine, weak to this nine, weak again to this nine, and then strong to the nine. So two weak links in a row, you'll notice there's three, at least three nines here in column eight. So you gotta use those weak links. When you have two weak links in a row, it means that you can eliminate that single candidate from this cell. So in the first case, if this is a nine, obviously this can't be a nine. If this is not a nine, this would be a nine, this would be an eight, this would be a three, and then this would be a nine. And so this can't be a nine. So when you have two weak links, it's telling you that that candidate cannot be, can be contained in that cell. So this is the second case of a discontinuous loop where it's, you have two weak links in a row involving the same candidate. Something else I wanted to point out, and that is a, this type of discontinuous loop can also be seen as just an alternate inference chain where you do not complete the loop. So in this case, this nine, strong to this nine, weak to the eight, strong to this eight, weak to the three, strong to this three, weak to the nine, strong to this nine. If you started here and ended here, you know that either this cell's a nine or that cell's a nine, and you can eliminate a nine from this cell. So as an alternate inference chain, you could eliminate that nine the same way, and you would not have to complete the discontinuous loop. And you could actually eliminate the nine from this cell right here, and you'd be able to solve a nine for that, that cell. Okay, I wanted to show that because um, an alternate inference chain type one might be a more powerful way to see this versus a discontinuous loop. So since we're talking about discontinuous loops, realize you know that can be in play there. And it works anytime you have the same candidate in a discontinuous loop. You can just see it as an alternate inference chain with the start and end point prior to entering that cell of discontinuity. Now, let's move on to our final example, which is the most important. Okay, this is our last example, and it's the most important because it covers the third type of discontinuous loop. And this is one where you might think you can't do an elimination, but you can't. All right, this is Hippolyte Spain by Sigetics. I recently featured this great puzzle. Uh, what's in the purple is an X chain of sixes. And so just realize these sixes basically create an X chain of strong links all the way around the purple. And we're gonna use that to figure out this discontinuous loop. Start in this cell right here. So this two has a strong link to this three, a weak link to this three, 
and then a strong link to this six. Okay, weak link to this six, strong link to this six. Weak link to this six, and this is a cell we care about, cell discontinuity. Weak link to this uh, two, strong link up to this two. There's only two twos along column five. Then a weak link to this two, and then strong to that three. And then we continue our loop. Okay, did you see what I did here and how it was different from my last example? From here, from this six, you're going in uh, strong link to this. You're going in here with a weak link to this six, and then you're changing digits to the two. So weak link to the six, weak link to the two, strong link to the two. So you come in through one digit of six, you come out through a two. This is still a discontinuous loop, and you can do this. And what it means, whatever digit you enter in is the one you can remove. Okay? So let's try again. Strong, weak to three, strong to six, weak to the six, strong to six, weak to this six, weak to the two. So the one that's in between the two weak links, this six, is what you're going to be able to eliminate. This could never be a six. Weak to the two, strong to this two, weak to this two. And we'll, again, we'll prove this. You know, if this is a two, then this can't be a two, and this would be a two. And so it can't be a six. This is a three, then this would be a six. That can't be a six. This would be a six, and this can't be a six. So either this cell is a two, or it's going to be a six, no matter what this cell is right there. And so that's why we can eliminate the six from this cell. See how that works? You might be wondering, how can you find these discontinuous loops? Because if I had all of these cells filled out, it might be really, really hard. I'll tell you, look for the bi-value cells because those strong links in the BVCs, they act like the glue between. And then you're just kind of looking for, could I make a continuous loop? Yes, I'm almost there, but I just have one cell I need to worry about. When you find that one cell, see if there's a discontinuous loop that's going to help you out. And it'll bring you back to where you need to go. You do that and you'll start finding these discontinuous loops and be able to make these eliminations and solves to help you tackle these very advanced puzzles. So check out this other video from my channel, which uses both continuous and discontinuous loops and takes it in a whole new direction. You're going to want to check it out. Please consider clicking on the Buy Me Coffee link below and support this channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all the centers that let me feature your puzzles on this channel. Thank you. So much for watching.